Today I want to talk about some equivalent sequels. Statements that give the same result set but use different SQL constructs and may end up with different execution plans. Theoretically, the way the programmer writes a SQL is irrelevant to performance. The cost-based optimizer should be able to understand the intent of the SQL and rewrite it into whatever form is the most appropriate. Yet this is what the declarative nature of the SQL language is all about. And the CBO can indeed do some very clever rewrites. But the fact remains that there are occasions where equivalent SQLs will end up running with very different plans. The example I've constructed here, which is of course totally artificial and designed to cause a problem, shows how the optimizer can get it wrong and how the programmer can help. Every SQL has to go through various steps. Typically, row selection, joining of row sources, aggregation, and column projection. I'm going to look at the ordering of these stages and how changing the sequence of join and aggregation can have a huge effect. The example I'm going to work on is a simple query in the Scott demonstration schema that sums up the salaries per department. Now, I think it's probably true to say that 9 out of 10 programmers will write the query like this. A simple join of emp to dept with an aggregation. The 10th programmer won't write it like this. He'll write it using the old Oracle proprietary join syntax instead of the ANSI join syntax. Well, I am the 11th programmer. Consider this alternative here. With sums as, select depno, sum cell, taught from emp, group by depno. I'm using a subquery factoring clause to construct a view against one table, emp, and that view does the aggregation. Then I join that view to dept in the second query here. It looks like a bit more work, but it's going to yield exactly the same results. A third possibility is this here down at the bottom. This is the one that I really hate. Select dname and then a subquery from dept. This is a correlated subquery. I'm projecting a subquery that does the aggregation, which means I'm asking Oracle to run the subquery not once, the way I did up here with my subquery factoring clause, but to run that subquery once for every row in dept. And that would usually be dreadfully inefficient. So three formulations, a simple one, a subquery factored one, and then one with a correlated subquery. Let's see what actually happens. I'll use the autotrace facility to generate execution plans for the statements as I run them. First, the formulation of the query, where I do a straightforward join of empty depths with a correlation. So back come my four rows, and we can see how it's done it. It's chosen to use a merge join, passing through emp, getting the emp rows in department number order, then passing through dept using the pk dept index to sort that in department number order, merge the two result sets together, hash group by. That seems reasonable. Now let's try the second version of the statement, where I use the subquery factoring clause. So with sums as my subquery. And look with this, Oracle has done exactly what I asked it to do. It's passing through emp, doing the aggregation to construct a view. And those three steps there make up that clause. Then it's joining that view to the results of passing through depth. Finally, I'll try my correlated subquery formulation. The one I said I really didn't like, where in principle I'm asking Oracle to run that subquery once for every row in depth. The result, however, Oracle has rewritten the query. It's avoided the correlation problem. Quite simply, it's pulled out 
my subquery from the column projection list and has rewritten the code to run the query once, one pass through AMP, doing the aggregation to construct a view. So in fact, it's rewritten the query to exactly the same that I had when I explicitly used a subquery factoring clause. It's the same result. So far, no problem. Two different plans, but look at the cost. Cost is at seven, seven, seven. Of course, comparing costs between statements is not necessarily scientifically valid, but it does give us some idea that Oracle thinks these statements are roughly equivalent. So it really doesn't matter which version it uses. But what if the tables were significantly larger? I'm going to tell Oracle that the table emp has 100 million rows in 10 million blocks. I'm also going to tell Oracle that the department depth, the table depth, is significantly bigger. I'll set the stats for depth to 10 million rows in a million blocks. And now let's see what happens to my execution plans. First, I'll run the version of the query that nine programmers out of 10 would write. Woo! It's gone from a merge join, which we have previously, to a hash join, which is fair enough given the size of the tables, what it thinks the size of the tables are. So it's joining the tables, doing a group by. And look at that, 159 hours. That's the estimated time. Well, let's try the second formulation of the query where I used the subquery factoring clause. That's more like it. Less than a second. And note the plan in this case hasn't changed. It's constructing the view with the aggregation, then doing the join. Just for completeness, I'll do the third form with the correlated subquery. And that too has been rewritten as it was previously into a, cor into a factored subquery. So there we see cost of 3,879 time one second compared to cost of 14 billion time 159 hours. Why this difference? Why this huge difference? It's the ordering of the steps. The simple version joins the tables, then does the aggregation. So it's a huge data set that has to be aggregated. This version aggregates at this stage here. So only three rows flow up into the join. So the factored version doing the aggregation before the join appears to be massively more efficient. And note that Oracle, simply because of the formulation of my statement, chose one plan rather than the other, potentially with a massive difference in execution times. So what can we get out of this somewhat artificial example that I've gone through? SQLs may be logically equivalent. But that doesn't always mean that the cost-based optimizer will see them as the same, and they may therefore have different execution plans. In this particular case, you could see that for large row sets, aggregating before joining may be more efficient than the other way around. So if you have a problem SQL, always consider whether a different formulation of the query might push the optimizer towards a certain plan. That plan might be better, it might be worse, but you certainly need to check it out because no one's perfect, not even Uncle Oracle.